Hello everyone, it's 5.20 in the a.m. Central Standard Time, January the 2nd, 2020. And the, what I'm going to talk about today, I haven't really prepared for, because th th this isn't my uh, main forte. If I tried to prepare for it, it probably would have taken a long time and it would have cut very significantly into the things that, that I normally concentrate on. So, <laughs> the reason I'm doing this is because I just haven't heard anyone else addressing these issues. And they're they're big issues, and I really wish that I've heard somebody address these, at, at least, if not entirely, in, in the proper manner, at least uh, going in the right direction. I haven't even heard much uh, going in, in the right direction concerning these things and it has to do with what's going on right now all the the talk about what's happening in Virginia Virginia's become a focal point in something that has been a controversy for a while now and it has to do with the Bill of Rights of the U.S. Constitution. And when I say Bill of Rights, I'm specifically referring to Amendments 1 through 10 of the Constitution. Uh, amendments 11 through 27 are a bit different in nature. Now, I've heard a lot of people lately referring to the Bill of Rights, and most specifically <clears throat> um, Amendment 1 and Amendment 2. Uh, now, I myself have referred to both. More specifically, Amendment 1, either in social media posts or whenever I can have any kind of dialogue with anyone, concerning this this stuff because I use it as an illustration to try to point out how we have a, a, a completely rogue government. Now, <clears throat> I personally don't believe we have a rogue government because I don't believe we necessarily have a government and there are treaties and acts and various shady laws and actions taken and put into place over the years and uh, I mean many years actually starting with the <laughs> foundation of the United States and that's where America is concerned the uh, the the Occidental world or, or Christendom as we perceive and know it these things have been happening for a lot longer than that these sorts of uh, shady deals and and laws and national constitutions that, as far as I'm concerned, none of them are worth the paper they're written on. So, as I said, I, I you know, I use those two amendments of the Bill of Rights as well to try to illustrate how there there is no rule of law. The same people in the... Uh, assumed government of the United States and other governments of other countries, we see it 
in uh, those who purport to be governing England and Germany and France. As I said, the countries of Christendom, this, this isn't, this, this isn't an American thing only. Uh, however, even though I use those to, to illustrate the, the lawless nature of those who purport to be government and authority, um, uh, I don't use them or think about them ever as something that dictates the way that um, I behave or that that man should behave specifically that Christians the way that Christians should behave and that's kind of important that's maybe really important because What's happening right now is in uh, 18 days from, from today, there's going to be uh, a rally that has now become the focal point of the controversy over the Second Amendment, which is, is really making itself known mostly in Virginia. For anybody who's not paying attention to Virginia, the, the basic long and short of it is that um, not all that long ago, Bloomberg, a Jewish politician and uh, mega-rich, I'm not going to call him a businessman, because these uh, inordinately rich people, um, they tend to be not businessmen, not savvy businessmen, but corrupt robber barons. You can't even give them the respect of calling them businessmen. So an inordinately moneyed figure, he uh, apparently inserted a lot of money into democratic campaigns, probably with the quid pro quo with whoever was running in those various uh, districts, representative districts, that they would be tasked immediately with passing a lot of legislation that was very... <laughs> Uh, aggressive against the Second Amendment. And knowing that that is now on the table, uh, though it is yet to be ratified because Virginia's um, House and Senate, they're not in session yet. But everybody sees it as, as something that's that that's looming uh, on the horizon, and it, and it's not going to waver. Every everybody seeing this is uh, something that the Virginia Congress is definitely going to pass, and that's that's going to be a, a total affront to the rights of of Virginians. And to keep in mind that every state in the United States they have their own constitution. And for the most part, those constitutions um, tend to reflect the the uh, federal constitution, I'll just say the the U.S. Constitution. Uh, and and all of those rights are uh, essentially, you know, in the Bill of Rights, uh, amendments one through ten, essentially supposed to apply to everyone uh, in the United States. And so this is this has become a big thing, and now. Um, the the gun enthusiasts and militia and all that they're they're going to have a, a rally on January twentieth. Now, <clears throat> this is what's happening on the twentieth. Is it, it's actually a it, it it's an annual thing that uh, that Virginians have participated in for 
I don't even know how long, a really long time, where they would have a a small rally, uh, sort of a Second Amendment rally, and then they would go into the um, the the state house and uh, would speak to their congressman, state congressman, concerning uh, any grievances or issues or, or, or whatever else they wanted to talk to them about. And they would be fully armed when they did this. It was kind of this tradition, you know, um, celebrating their, the Second Amendment. So that's, that's kind of the, um, the foundation uh, of, of this controversy. And, um, you know, a lot of people, so, so now what's, what's happening is on my YouTube feed, a lot of these people I've never heard of. They're coming out of the woodwork and, and YouTube wants me to watch and listen to a whole lot of people I've never even heard of before. And the interesting thing is a great many of these people that YouTube wants me to watch because they're feeding these videos to me are uh, these these characters that um, appear to be uh, very pro-Second Amendment. Now I'm referring to them as characters because I don't know these people. And if you don't know these people and you don't know that they're they're just that they're just a genuine common person who who's just you know running a YouTube channel then what do you know about them you don't they they can seem like uh the regular joe next door but that doesn't mean they are and we've been fooled so many times by these provocateurs and these actors that i would give none of them any latitude at, at all and in fact, um, one of these characters in particular that so many keep referring everybody watching them to their channel, he strikes me both in look, in attitude, in, in his mouth, and everything else as somebody straight out of the IDF. I, I see all of this as being totally controlled uh, on on every end and the people out there that that have the ears now of so many pro second amendment people um they uh they for some reason are supporting historical narratives that i have found to be utterly false they're supporting ideologies that if they were to do so a hundred years ago in this country, they'd probably be tarred and feathered and ran out of town. But because of the, the frog in the water, so many people don't appear to understand that all these people who appear to be on the, and I'll say it in quotes, the right, are just shaping the narrative and steering all of this just as they always have. Anybody who doesn't realize that the last war that the constitutional United States had, and it hasn't been a constitutional United States since, by the way, the Civil War, was entirely steered, both sides, by the same people like Bloomberg, like Soros, their same people. I want so badly for people to see what's going on. I want, I want badly for people to not be taken in by this idea of Democrats versus Republicans. People, people that call themselves Democrats today aren't even Democrats as far as like traditional Democratic Party and their beliefs 
They're communists, people that claim to be Democrats today. That's all they are. They're communists. But um, I, I don't want to spend this whole time talking about those those kind of things. You know, what is a, a Democrat? Are they a communist? What is a Republican? I mean, is a Republican even a re traditional Republican? I don't. The the point to a lot to a lot of this is um one of the the big themes that I've heard long before uh this whole thing with Virginia and the Second Amendment started, uh, I've heard this in context with the First Amendment too. And I've even made some statements myself, uh especially as I was learning. Um Concerning, uh, like, an equation between, let's say, the Constitution of the United States and the uh, Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, uh, to those things being, say, godly and biblical. Uh, now, making statements that, that equated those things together would definitely have been something I would have done more... Uh, longer ago than I would think to do more recently. Um, I'm very concerned for the the people that are are being taken in by this again. What I see as a an artificial conflict, and I'm not saying there's no controversy here. There is. Um, however, its makeup is not really what I, what people, I think, perceive it to be. And I also think that there's some very bad perceptions concerning the Constitution, Bill of Rights, and rule of law in America. And how we should be approaching this and how we should be behaving. The one thing that I've heard so often is that people equating the Bill of Rights with God given rights. I've heard that, well, I can't even count how many times I've heard that. And it comes from. It comes from people that are running the major Christian identitarian networks that are out there. There's only a couple of them. It comes from people running secular white identitarian uh, entities. Of course, it comes from um, patriot movement people. It, it's coming it, it, everywhere. It's ubiquitous. This idea that uh, freedom of speech, the, the right to keep and bear arms, well-regulated militia by the people, and so forth. All of these rights articulated in the Bill of Rights are God-given rights. And the people saying this stuff seem to have this idea that, that those things, in fact, are God-given rights. And uh, what I can't understand is, uh, first off, where anybody is finding in the Bible that those are God-given rights. I would like anyone to please point out to me where they can find that the freedom of speech or the press or... Congress shall make no law concerning religion. Find that in the Bible for me. If you could find the right to keep and bear arms in the Bible, please do. Now, it is true that at, uh, at the end of the, the event we call the Last Supper, that Jesus told his disciples, even though they didn't need to arm themselves and protect themselves while they were with him, that now that he was leaving, that they needed to go and get a sword. And he said, if you have to, sell your cloak 
and get a sword, a weapon to defend themselves. Again, I need somebody to show me, though, how that is a God-given right. He told them to go and do something, to arm themselves. But we need to at least be clear about something. What is a God-given right? And if people get it in their heads that that these certain rights articulated in the Constitution are God-given, or they keep equating the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence as some kind of documents that are somehow equilateral, like uh, on equal footing with the Bible, or even Magna Carta. Um, I want to see proof of that in the Bible. Because as I see it, based on everything I know about the Bible, nobody has any rights that their Creator does not allow them. They, they don't even have rights, per se. Now, consider James himself in the New Testament. Talks about all of our plans and intentions. But he says that a wise man would say that today I will live if he, Yahweh, the God of Israel, allows it. Today I'll live if he allows it. That is the extent of everyone's rights. I think rights and the idea of rights are something that needed to be sold to the common man in order to push ideas of democracy and republics. Um, you know... Rights, as far as, you know, I have this right, you don't have the right to, and so on and so forth. This is all based on man-made uh, laws, acts, contracts. These are contracts. What we're talking about, they're contracts. Because... Uh, a whole lot of what you're going to find just in the the founding documents of the United States, and I'm sure you're going to find this in founding documents of other countries, white countries, or any countries. You're going to find a lot of talk of things that will be or are to be done that basically have everything to do with contract. These are contracts. Um, and there's a huge difference between them and what privileges a people would enjoy if they were to keep the laws and the statutes, the judgments of Yahweh as articulated in the Old Testament, specifically the first five books, which is called Torah, and the, the Jews call it Torah, but um, the Pentateuch. There's nothing so much as anywhere that says you have a right to this or that or the other. Simply it says, frequently he says, that man is expected to do this. If man does not do this, or does something to the contrary, or when he outlines certain uh, crimes, he says for the, the doing of certain things, or the not doing of certain things, there will be possibly some sort of punishment imposed, whether it be a fine 
um, in, in more extreme cases, uh, a cutting off from the people, uh, like expulsion, banishment, um, or in other cases, death. But there isn't any talk about rights. Because, as I just said, if you are created, you are a being who is not only created, but sustained by another being, one more powerful, powerful enough to create you and sustain you, one who's powerful enough to where he has determined the day, time, and manner of your death then it is entirely his prerogative to decide what privileges you enjoy. Rights are a fantasy. They're a fantasy. Now, you can say that no one ought to do this or that to me or anyone else, and you may well be right, and the thing is, the only way that any, anyone's going to be able to determine that, if you claim to be a Christian, believer in the Bible, is by going to the Bible and determining whether or not it is right or good to do that. Something you need to consider because this is, this has really opened the floodgates for us to follow after all of these man-made documents and contracts, which are just fertile ground for all kinds of deception and, um, p power perceived as opposed to, to genuine, authentic, lawful government. Um, for one thing, Jesus was a huge proponent of the law. And the churches today tend to teach things like that the law is no more valid or sometimes even useful. And the thing is, we are not ever going to have a good, righteous country or, by further extension, world if we don't follow his laws. His laws are based on agreements that a people, specifically his people, us his people, Israel, are commanded to keep these laws, and we should very much teach others to do so. He says more than once that even when there's an alien or a stranger among us, we can't have different laws for them that we apply to ourselves. There has to be one law for all, and he expects us to keep it, or he's not going to bless us. And he also would expect us to apply that to the way that we deal with others, other peoples, other nations. And eventually, if we do that, we keep his law. We repent, turn away from all of our, our selfishness and following after our own desires and our foolishness in believing that these contracts actually offer us any protections, offer us any freedoms, offer uh, any power of protecting or instilling any rights into us, then we will be blessed as a people if we spend time studying his law and behave accordingly. Now, I think I've got a pretty good bead on the way things are, and who's running things, how they run things, and why. Now, one of the things that they don't want is for us to be keeping his law to the letter. 
And don't tell me it can't be done, because if you do, you're a liar, because he says it's not far from you. He says, don't say this is, this is too much, that, that it's too broad, that it's undoable. Now, we may all be guilty of breaking the law, and that gets into the area of sin and redemption, <clears throat> and that is a different matter altogether concerning Jesus. I'll, I'll keep with his, his anglicized name, Western anglicized known name. That concerns matters of redemption and sin, which are different matters than law and his people and his people keeping his law and whether or not they will prosper. He promises that if we don't keep his law, we won't prosper, that he'll put the alien over us, that they will oppress us, that we will suffer from diseases and want and lack. <laughs> you know, things that we're suffering from today and have been for some time. Because not just us, and not just our fathers and grandfathers' generations, but generations for some time have been, instead of turning fully to him and his law, and there have been times when we have a little bit more than others. We certainly are not today. They turn to constitutions, founding documents, those sorts of rules of law. And then they just go forward and they try to feel better about themselves by saying that those are biblical. But I would like anyone to show me how freedom of religion is biblical. Make a case to me how Jesus would have been really into freedom of religion. Go into the Old Testament and show me how Yahweh was a big supporter of freedom of religion. And as far as Second Amendment rights, the rights to keep and bear arms and a, 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 a militia, a stable militia, <clears throat> you guys need to read the book of Judges. And you need to see how when Israel turns from serving Yahweh and they turn to serving these other whatever kinds of gods they are, they're probably gods of fortune, gods of 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 sex, gods of war, whatever the, their particular, and we, we see this with still with pagan cultures, that's the sorts of gods that they serve, and that's the sorts of gods that are being served by his people today. They're running after the god of finance, sex, um, power, feeling good, it doesn't really matter. You know, man tends to come up with any sort of God that suits whatever his desire is that he's after. So in Judges, which is a great sketch of exactly how this works, and you can see it over and over just as a pattern, so they turn from following Yahweh and trying to keep his law. And they were never perfect at it, but they turn away from even trying to keep it. And they just follow after their own desires, whatever gods fulfill whatever desires they have. And what happens is the other nations around, Yahweh raises them up, strengthens them, and then brings them against his people. That's what he does. Don't say that it's not him. Don't say it's the devil. Don't say it's the Jews or anything else. Whoever is doing whatever they're doing, they're being given the power to do it because we are not following his laws. This is the whole point. 
And when we don't follow his laws, his ways, his statutes, his judgments, we don't have any rights. He will take them away faster than you can say Second Amendment. He will take away your so-called right to free speech faster than you can say it. Rights is an illusion. Who gave it to you? Do you really think these pieces of paper give to you or articulate to you natural rights that you have? Now, I don't believe that anyone should um, rob anyone else of anything that Yahweh says they are free to have or do. However, I just don't particularly see him ever saying that anyone has the right to keep and bear arms, has the right to freedom of speech, certainly not freedom of religion. You're going to have a tough time selling that one to me. Or any other assumed rights that we think we have. The thing that bothers me so much about what I see building <clears throat> with its, uh, its center point being Virginia is the fact that virtually no one that appears to be involved with this seems to be saddened by the state that we have gotten ourselves in our state of being today. These are not people mourning over our immorality and how that has led us to this point. And so many of them seem very confident that the so-called grassroots right has the upper hand as far as numbers go. Well, if you'd spend some time reading the Bible, you'd also see that numbers count for nothing. And that's another reason that I'm concerned about these patriots. You see, I said a long time ago something that I'm going to say again. Um, I don't have a desire for unbelieving, atheistic, and oftentimes Yahweh-hating or God-hating people that are just of my own race and ethnos to rule over me. What's the difference? Really? You tell me, what's the difference? Because I see in so many of them the same spirit that our forefathers had, those ones who persecuted and murdered the prophets sent by the very God so many claim to be serving. I hear people actually making these statements. They, they, they quote Joshua out of context. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. not even understanding the context of the speech he was giving, or the context of keeping his law, or continuing to point to documents on a piece of paper that somehow we think articulates and preserves our rights. And that's the thing. I don't have any intention of wanting to, um, <clears throat> if, you know, if we want to use words like rights, like just natural rights, I've heard people put it in that context. Natural rights, right? Instead of rights articulated in a document, they'll say natural rights. They'll just say, well, these are just the rights that uh, any human, they say, has. 
And and that would be essentially you should have the natural right in which nobody can violate your person through through robbery, um, violence, or oppression, things like that. Again, you know, I wouldn't want to uh, to violate any. Let's just say if we want to call them rights that they possess because they were made after the image of the creator. Okay? I wouldn't want to do that. But here's the thing. It's not going to be me who's, who's, who's doing that. If, if we don't wise up and start following the laws that he gave our forefathers back in the wilderness between Mitzram and Canaan. If we don't start studying those and applying those, following those, it's going to be him that is going to take away your illusion of even natural rights. He owns you. You don't exist without him. So, whatever it is he says that he expects from you, or he says that he is going to do if you continue to break his laws, to live in manners that are abominable to him, he is going to take away all of those imagined rights that you have. <clears throat> and you know, the thing is, I, I cannot see him giving any kind of victory to his people who are so entrenched in their own desires I, I seriously cannot see some kind of, of better government coming out of a pack of rabid constitutionalists. Because I'm not a constitutionalist. Uh, ist. Without the extra S at the end. I believe in his word, his law, his authority, and acting and behaving as he says. So, before anybody asks, oh, so you believe in this, so you believe in that, having to do with various points that people use to be accusative towards him, my answer to you is, if it's in his law, yes, I believe it's to be done. End of story. Now, of course, the portions of the law that have to do with sacrifice, various forms of sacrifice, things brought for sacrifice, and so on and so forth. Well, anybody who's a Christian would know that that portion of it has been fulfilled in the final appeasing sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So you don't have to nitpick over those things. And you'll find that the more that you read concerning the laws that he expects of his people, these are civil moral laws. They are, even in the pretty poor and questionable translations that we have today, more or less pretty clear. Like if you go on vacation and your neighbor agrees to watch something of yours, and you get back, and it's gone, and he claims something about it, there is a burden upon him to produce evidence that this thing happened, and if he can't, he has to replace it. Things like that. These are not lofty concepts that you can't get your head around. But nobody out there can claim at one time to be a Christian and at the same time adhere 
to these man-made documents that oftentimes run entirely contrary to the laws of the God of Israel. You can't be both. You can't practice both. If you, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave you with this because I don't want to just keep going on and on. I really don't. Like I said, this isn't even my, my format or forte. <clears throat> if you should be a committed constitutionalist, um, then what you'll do is you will follow and practice the supposed laws articulated within that document. What I would propose to you, since that document, and you need to find this out for yourself, that document is not parallel to the laws, statutes, and judgments of Yahweh. There are areas of it that are paralleled, but it falls terrifically short of his laws. I would propose to you that if you are committed to being a constitutionalist rather than committed to following his laws, that you are worshiping the beast. That's what you're doing. Worship is to believe and act on a set of prescribed behaviors or laws. That's what worship is. Worship's not just falling down on your knees or bowing. That's not worship. That's showing obeisance, but that's not worship. Worship is your mindset and the actions based on your mindset. And if you are acting and thinking based on some kind of set of supposed laws created by men and not the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of Jesus Christ, then you are worshiping the beast because that is absolutely endemic and representative of the beast and its system. That's as night and day as I can put it. So I will continue to, to pray for these people getting involved in this mess in Virginia who are all being steered in the direction that these people like Bloomberg want them to go in that they will be safe I don't want to see my people or any people suffer be oppressed but the thing is if we don't wise up that's all that's going to continue to happen it's been happening to us for a long time and we've been enslaved for a long time and if you would just spend some time reading the Bible and the laws articulated therein, you'd understand why we've been in this state for so long. If you don't understand that you're enslaved or you're oppressed, I'm sorry for you. I hope that you'll be given some wisdom and understanding concerning those things. But I will continue to pray for these people, my people, and all men that will wise up and that all of these these crimes and they're horrific the crimes that these these folks the like of Bloomberg and Soros and the feds the Federal Reserve and so on and so forth you know the Bernanke's the uh, 
green spans and so on. I will pray that their crimes and injustices, their, their, the sick things they do will come to an end. However, it's not going to come to an end as long as people follow after these man-made laws and not after the laws of our God, our Aliyim, as he wrote them down and preserved them in his word. So anyways, uh, that's all I have on this. I, I really do hope to see more people, especially those who are perceived as, as leaders, you know, especially in Christian identity or Christianity, even if it's, you know, more on the uh, evangelical side of it. Somebody, somebody, please start saying these things. Um because this isn't my forte. I don't know how to write sermons. If I if I did the uh the historical work I would need to talk about certain things, it would it would take so long. That's all I can really tell you is what I know and understand about the Bible and about Yahweh and his people and what he has to say about us keeping his laws as opposed to worshiping the laws and documents made by men. And with that, I'm out. Everybody, take care.